you got your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It's not on your outline. The outlines, of course, are back there. The title today is on newness. What's new? We ask each other that. What's new? What's up? What's new? But it's newness of spirit and life. You'll see what I mean by that as we get into the message this morning. When we greet one another, one of the main things that we say is, um, how's it going? Or what's new? Something along those lines. We, we do it every day, at least every other day, but we meet people, we greet people, and that's a greeting. That's one of the common greetings that we do. And one common response is, well, the same old, same old. What's new? Oh, same old, same old. I say it. I think we've all said it to some degree. And yet, is that the encounter or experience that Jesus brings to us? Same old, same old. And so, I looked it up just to see what the internet has to say about that, where, where it came from and all that. The only thing that I was intrigued by was this one statement. Same old, same old means List these three definitions. Predictability, boring, dreary. And so when we make that statement, and I know we feel that because you, we've all got a daily grind going on. It's different. We've created normals, daily grind. Um, to, the, to a degree it's necessary. But where's the new in the midst of it? If we get caught up in the rut of the daily grind, and all we can perpetuate is the same old, same old, then your life becomes predictable. Church becomes predictable. Relationships become predictable. Life in itself, it becomes predictable, then it becomes boring, and then you get into this depressing mode where it's just dreary. And sometimes we feel like our lives are just going around the mountain. Week after week, it's Monday. Tomorrow's Monday, and we're, and we're going to have the mentality, some of us, that here we go again. Then we got the weekend. Then comes Monday. Here we go again. Then we've got Wednesday. That's the hump day. Hopefully we get over that, come back down, and ease into the weekend, only to do this thing all over again. And so we see the same mountains, the same uh, scenery, the same people doing the same stuff with the same problems, and nothing's new. Nothing's new. Now, that's... Am I, is, is that the life that Christ left us? Is that the life we are to manifest on earth from heaven is the same old, same old? Now, people like new. I mean, you know when you bought a new car, that's nice. We like new. We like new cars. We like new houses. Some of us like new clothes, um, new relationships. Oh, I just started a new church, and now everything's new. New, new friends, new church. New, I just got married again. New, new wife, another wife. I mean, everything. Everybody gets excited about new, and, and I guess rightfully so. I'm not criticizing that, but it's nice when we experience new. And Jesus is not about bringing old and reforming old and recycling old. Um, you can go buy a used car and they can do everything they can to make it look nice but you know and I know it ain't new they can even try to put that air freshener he sells you know to do the best they can to present it and it's good it's cool I mean but the, it's, it's not new it's not new we like new we like to go to places we've never been before because it's new we like to encounter new and God knows that now Einstein is is um, notorious for this quote is that the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same things over and over and over and over again and yet honestly expecting different results which would be new a new result they don't do that in the laboratory they don't keep doing the same the same um, tests and run the same labs or whatever and, and end up thinking that they're going to get something different. No, they're going to have to do something. They're going to have to tweak it. They're going to have to try this, that. Every time they go into the lab, they're doing something new to get a different result. Not something old to get a different result. 
You don't get you don't get new out of practicing old. New only comes from new, not from old. Something you've never experienced or encountered before. Now the reason why um, we manifest old when we should be. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you all the scriptures for for this here in a minute. But one of the reasons is that uh, when we come together. In whatever venue that we come together in, with relationships, dinners, community, church, but when we, if we, we come together, even as family, we come together, are we bringing new to the table? Are we manifesting new, something new, fresh, that's got life on it, or are we bringing the same old, same old? And I'm going to submit to you that when we live out of our carnality, all you can expect is old. The same old, same old, when we live out of carnality. Now let me give you an example. I had you turn to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. This is not debatable. It's right here in front of our eyes. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual men. Now how does a man become spiritual? How does, how does one become spiritual. He says, when I came to this church and I determined to sit here and talk to you, my goal is to talk to you as spiritual men. He said, but I couldn't do that. So before we get into what, he, what, what actually took place here in this Corinthian church, what does it mean to talk to someone as a spiritual person? Yes, you're, li you're living out of your spirit makes you a spiritual man. When you're living out of your spirit, and remember what spirit is. Spirit is you and the Father joined together. He who is one, he who is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit. All right, so we encounter God out of our spirit that we're one with him. Christ in us is that spirit of union that we have his life and our life united we have a shared life in him we live move have our being when you're living out of that you your real identity spirit um, then I can talk to you as a spiritual man or a spiritual woman I can we can have a spiritual conversation I, I just heard uh, a year or two ago one of one of so one of the guys that I've listened to in the past say don't ever use the term spirituality to me and I'm like, there's, there's, there's a lot of people stretching. And I don't know where that, where that goes. I don't know where they think they're going to go with, with a lot of this tweaking scriptures. No, when we, well, I heard another guy say, we don't even have a spirit. And it's all through the, the New Testament that we are spiritual beings. We have spirits. And, the, and, and what is the fruit of the spirit? Henry Drummond, um, the quote that I used for him a million times. The definition of spirituality is expressions of the Spirit. What's the fruit of the Spirit? It's expressions of the Spirit. That life of Christ that's in you that you're united to called Spirit. Now you have a Spirit. Christ comes in and He who is joined the Lord is one Spirit. We've showed this a million times over on Thursdays. But what you have to understand is once the new self, the new man is joined to the Lord. He's never separated. He's joined. He's never separated. Once his eyes are open to his union, he'll never see it again as a separation. So there's no separation. It's a union. You'll never be separated. But however, you can determine not to live out of that shared life. It's a shared life. You live out of it or you don't live out of it. And when Paul went to these people, they were not living out of their spirit. They were being carnal. Now watch what he says here. And I, brethren, cannot speak to you as spiritual men, but as to men of flesh, as to infants in Christ. He says, I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you are not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now you're not yet able, for you are still carnal or fleshly. I think the King James says carnal. New American Standard here says fleshly. For since there is... Now watch what happens when you're not living out of your spirit. In this case, 
In this particular context, jealousy is there. Jealousy is among them. Um, one is saying, I'm a Paul. One is saying, I'm, there's division, jealousy, division. There's strife. There's envy. There's, and if you read through the Corinthian letter, they're suing one another. I mean, they're, doing, they're, just, they're living out of an unrenewed mind. They're not living out of identity. They're not living from their identity. They're not living from the Spirit. They're living from the old way of living that ended in Christ. But not having a renewed mind, you go back to the old and you can't experience the new. Does that make sense? Okay. So when we come together, are we, are we expressing out of our spirit? And if we are, I can promise you, they'll be new. You can't, you wait till you get done, but I get done with this. This is just another angle, it's a huge nugget for me that um, I've never taught before. So what I'm about to tell you, and I accidentally stumbled onto this as I was preparing my message for Thursday that I never really got to speak because he's changed it in the, in the Thursday morning and I had to come up with the one he gave me. So this comes from thir this coming Thursday, but I'm pulling it out because there's so much in Thursdays that this stands on its own. But anyway, I just stumbled onto this. Now, and it just, yeah, I mean, I'm talking, this is huge for me. It may not be for you, but for me. Jesus offers new what? New life. New life, not old life. Not a repackaged old life. Let's just take the old life and let's repackage it. Let's reform it. Let's make it a better life. No, he ends the old and he brings in new, which we'll look at here in a minute. So through Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, and his ascension, we call that a finished work, he raises us to newness of life. Now watch, newness of life and newness of spirit. Newness of life that never gets old. Newness of life that never ever gets old. It keeps growing, evolving as it encounters more of God. He's so vast you never really comprehend him. So every, every time God opens your eyes, unveils something, it's going to be what? New. And, and, once it, and when, it becomes some, when you encounter new, you experience and manifest that new. Now let's look at two scriptures here on newness. Um, Romans 6, chapter, four, chapter 6, verse 4. Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father. Now look, even so we, what happens to Christ happens to you, even so we also should walk out. Now that's not when your eyes got open or awakened to you when you were in Christ, whatever date you want to call that, um, new birth. Um, that, that's just not then. <clears throat> okay, you can just say, oh, it's new and now it got old. It got stale. It got, we're in a rut. We, it, it's now, it's, it's, now it becomes the same old, same old. What happened in church? Oh, the same old, same old. What's going on in your life? Same old, same old. Is that what it's, newness of life is not, it's new for that day. And from that point on, I mean, like they say, they say, once a baby's born, now he's dying. Once he's born, new life, and then he takes his breath, new life, and then from that point, time the clock, talk, the clock starts ticking, he's now starting to die. We're in this mode of dying. That's what they say. But is that what is that how it's supposed to be? Once we're, our eyes are open, my, it's new and it's only going to keep getting new. And if it's not, it is proof positive you are not living out of your identity. You're not living out of the spirit. You're living out of what the mind and emotions and will is catering to or receiving from tree of knowledge of good and evil. All that tree can produce is the same old, same old. That's it. And if you're looking at your life and you're like, this, this, this is it, you got to be honest. You're not living out of the Spirit. You're not walking in the Spirit. You're not living out of the Spirit because that is always going to produce new. Always. Now, not every time you turn around, you know, but you know it's always going to be fresh vital, full of life. I mean, when Peter says joy unspeakable, full of glory, is that what we encounter? Joy unspeakable, full of glory? Or same old, same old? Peter doesn't say same old, same old. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. So as a new... Okay, let's go to the next verse. Romans 7. This is newness of life. Now this one 
is because of newness of spirit. But now we have been, now the now Romans 6 has been delivered from sin, meaning newness of life. This one is we're delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve, serve in how? Newness of the spirit. That's how we live now. The only way to get newness of life is to live out a newness of the spirit. Only the spirit gives life. Jesus is a life-giving what? Spirit. He became a life-giving spirit. So the spirit brings life. And it's newness. Newness of life is lived out of newness of the spirit. I ain't going to spend much time. You can look at that later. So as a new creation in Christ, we serve in newness of spirit, not out of the oldness of the tree of knowledge and good and evil letter of the law, but out of the newness of the spirit um, is out of our spirit. For in spirit we have Christ and in spirit we can contact God. And it's out of that relationship. You can't even make a formula out of this. Um, steps on how to live out of the spirit. No, you live out of the spirit by relating to Jesus out of your union. That's how. That's the only way you draw out of your spirit is out of the relationship. You can't tweak it. You can't. You can't put five secrets and two keys. It's a relationship. It's a union, and out of that union, always comes new. Always comes life. Newness of spirit produces newness of life. So we serve out of the newness of the spirit. So on one hand, and this is on your outline. On one hand, we need to live in the newness of life. And on the other hand, we need to be serving in newness of the Spirit. When you look at those two verses. Both are the issue of the fact that in Christ, having God's life to be a new creation in resurrection on earth in our bodies. So now listen to this. In God's kingdom, not on earth, in God's kingdom, everything is new. Revelation 21.5. Then he sat on the throne and said, and you know, you can put this clear past the millennium. I don't do that. I don't see the book of Revelation like everybody else does. This is, this is now. Then he sat on the throne and behold, look what he says. Behold, what's he say? I make what? All things what? New. I make all things new. How does he do that? How does he do that? And he goes on to say, um, and he said to me, right for these words are true and faithful. He makes all things new. So in God's kingdom, everything is new. For God's making all things new. So if you're looking at a bad marriage, you got to look at this and go, you know what, I know it's same old, same old, and it doesn't look good, and it's going to hell in a handbasket, whatever, but I don't believe that. I believe if we both can live out of our spirit, this thing is going to be new, brand new. I mean, you guys dated. You know dating someone for the first time is exciting and everything's great. And then after time, you know, I, I'm just rem reminded of a sermon I did when I was a, when I was a youth minister. Um, I, I did a youth conference in Grafton, 1986, I think it was. And... Um, and I had this, this message God had given me um, on leaving your first love. And, of course, I'm ministering to youth. And I said, you know, it's just like a guy, he's, he, he, he dates this girl. And he, he, the first date, he's all dressed up. He got him a haircut, got him in, got some new clothes. He's cleaned that car better than he's ever cleaned it. And he picks her up, and he takes her to the best restaurant in town. And, I mean, he's just doing it right. Then, after about six months to a year... He's showing up in old blue jeans. He didn't wash his hair. The car is a mess. And he's taking her to uh, McDonald's. I mean, and then she has every right to sit there and says, what happened to the love? And I, and I pulled from the Aretha Frank, I think it's Aretha Frank or Roberta Flack, one of those two. I get it mixed up on some songs. But where she sings, where is the love? From the, from the 70s. And they have every right to say that because now they're acting differently, treating them differently. 
But while they were on the hunt, they were the best, but now that they got the girl, they all, then the true callers come out and they're sloppy and they don't open the car door, they don't do anything, talk to them, mean this, that, and the other. And I said, and God's asking the same question. When this thing was new, you were on fire. When this thing was new, man, it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. But now that we've been together for a while, you put in about 365 Sundays and Thursday nights, and you, you've been here, done that, and now it's old. It's old. And that's not what he came. I come that you might have what? Life and have it more abundantly. How can he do that? Because he's always new. Now, he's not new in himself. God's not evolving. But here's the, here's the deal. He's so vast. Okay, he's so vast that it's like a diamond. Every time you see a piece of him, it's new. And it results in encounter. It results in transformation. It results in new for you, though it's not new for him, but new for you. And, you will, and God will always be new because you'll never, ever surpass who he is in understanding. He's, or he wouldn't be God if he could. So he's, always, so he's always bringing new if we're living out of our spirit. So resurrection is in the life-giving spirit. 1 Corinthians 14 or 15, 45, if you want to see that verse. And so it is written, the first Adam, um, the first man became a living being, a living soul. The last Adam becomes a life-giving spirit. Now, resurrection is in the life-giving spirit who is in our spirit. And whenever we turn to our spirit and live out of it, contacting the spirit, we live in spirit, move in spirit, have our being from the spirit. That's our identity. We live in resurrection life and we walk in newness of life. Now look at Romans 1.9. For God is my witness, this is Paul speaking, whom I serve, how? With my spirit. Which is really not, remember, remember Thursday, it's not I, but Christ, yet not I. I live, yet not I, because you can't separate union. So he's saying, my spirit, I whom I serve with my spirit, making me, if you're going to go back to 1 Corinthians 3, a spiritual man that you can talk spiritual things with, because I live or serve out of my spirit in the gospel of his son. That without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. But see how he say, I'm serving out of my spirit. Well, why say that if that's automatic? If, and here he says, you're serving out of your carnality in 1 Corinthians. That's why the church and the Corinthian church looked like it did. They weren't serving God out of the newness of spirit. They were serving him out of the letter of the law out of a piece of paper, out of rules, regulations, out of, out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, When we touch the spirit, when we touch spirit, we manifest newness. When you're living out of spirit, you're manifesting newness. When we live out of our spirit, we're releasing God. And God is always new because he's always becoming new to us. Uh, look at 2 Corinthians 5.17. Now, everybody knows this verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new, there you go, new creation. And what happens in this new life, living out of a, the newness of the Spirit, what happens? Old things pass away. So there's no more same old, same old. They, it, old is passing away. You go back to the, uh, the Old Testament, the picture of the cloud moving. That's, that's the clouds type of the Holy Spirit. Always moving you into new encounters, new land, new experiences. Because he never wants you to stay in one place. He's always conforming you into the image of new, Jesus. God is new, Jesus is new, and you're being conformed in the image of new all the time. you got to see God is new. Always new. Because the minute God becomes old, you put him in a theological box. Locked him up, and that's how he is. Got him under my belt. Let's move on to something. No, and then that you just perpetuate old. So therefore, if anyone is in Christ, new creation, old things pass away, and all things have become new. So if you go back to Revelation 21, 5, how is he making all things new? Is by making you new and keeping you new. Spirit is always unveiling God. 
always keeping the things new, new, new. Okay? So if you're in old, you know how you're, ser you're serving in the oldness of the letter, the letter of the law. And like Paul, we should serve God in our spirit by the indwelling Christ, the life-giving spirit, and not out of our carnality, but by the power and ability of the spirit, not by the power and ability of our flesh, soul. May we learn to contact the Lord in our spirit, receive him, and experience him in spirit, because that's who we are and that's where we dwell. And our bodies are just the containers for that. Exercise our spirit, live in spirit, serve God in our spirit so that we serve in newness of spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. And therefore, however we serve that, letter or spirit determines whether we're in old or we're now experiencing new. So let's just take a breath here, halfway through. Let's take a breath and then look at our lives. And, and then now we need to, we say, if I'm living old, and things just are getting old and I'm tired and it's the same old, same old. And there's nothing fresh. There's nothing new. You now know and have to take responsibility for your faith is not focused on, your, on who you are in him. Your faith is focused on what's going on outside of you. Remember we walk by faith and not by sight? We're engaging the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We're engaging sight. And that's drying up our encounter, our new because we're spending more time in what produces old. Again, the Einstein. Keep, keep doing the same stuff and think you're going to get something different. All you're going to get is the same old, same old, different version, but it's the same thing. Same thing. All right? So if we're living out of spirit, we can guarantee new. If we're living out of the letter, out of the old, we can guarantee same old, same old. Now look at 2 Timothy 4.22. I'm just going to show you some scriptures here. The Lord, Now this is Paul ending his letter with a prayer. The Lord Jesus Christ, beware. Where is he, where, where is he, what's his prayer? That Christ beware with your spirit. Grace be with you. So there is something about when you put all these spirit scriptures together, we're spirit. We're spirit beings. You can't get, you, you know, people just don't want to, don't want to do that. They don't want to, they, they, here's what I'm seeing in the church. We've got people that say we're spirit and there's no soul, which is your mind, emotions, and will. So how they determine what soul is, that's fine. And then there's no body. Then I've got people that says there's no spirit, it's just soul and body. And then I've got people that's body, soul, spirit. You, you're you're going to find this everywhere. And you can debate it all day long. But the fact is, I don't care how you see your soul. I don't see, care how you see your body. What I care about is how you see you as spirit. Because that's what's going to determine what goes through the body and manifest on earth. Does that make sense? 1 Corinthians 6, 17 again. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So... Our service to God, I'm going to read from the outline here, our service to God shouldn't be according to what we think, what we know, and what we learn or pick up by looking at others or hearing others. Our service to God should be in spirit through our spirit. Now all that other stuff can confirm it, but it's got to start within us. Do you realize that, listen to me, you could be listening to so many sermons on YouTube that you're going to get so frustrated and aggravated and, and you're not going to know why because you think you're doing something right. Well, I'm listening to the Word of God. I'm listening to preachers and teachers expound on the Word of God. Yeah, well, you're not hearing, you're, you're not hearing and living from your spirit. You're hearing and living from somebody else's. If they're living from their own spirit. Or did they pick up something and regurgitate what they heard and by the time it gets to you, it's so carnal, it's, it's no life, there's no life on it. You got to stop listening to people. You know, you find a few, plug in, but you got to give time to live out of your spirit. You got to you got to give time to hear what your spirit is saying, not what everybody else is saying. Because you know what that is? That's relationship. You're hearing about stuff. I, you know what? You know what people that are lonely do, and it's knee jerk reaction, and everybody does it at one point in their life. They don't have anybody. Maybe they're divorced or maybe they've never gotten married. But the fact is, 
A lot of people that are romantics by heart will end up living their life vicariously through another relationship. And that's why Hallmark is so, so popular. It's because of the love stories. They sit there and watch these love stories, and all they're watching is somebody else's encounter and somebody else's experience, and they go home, they go to bed that night, and they, they aren't fulfilled. And all, if we're sitting there watching other people's encounters and hearing what, what God is saying to other people, where's your encounter? Where's your... And if you're not doing that, I promise you, you're not experiencing new. Not happening. I don't care how religious you are and how much you think. I've watched eight hours of sermons a day and I'm dead. I'm empty. What's going on? You didn't encounter God through your spirit. You encountered other people through the five senses. Okay? So if we live from our spirit, we will have something new, something fresh to offer our brothers and sisters. Earth. Church. wherever, Whatever venue you're at. If we live from our spirit, we will have something new and fresh to offer. Merely remembering all the doctrines, watching YouTube videos, and, 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 and rehashing your spiritual knowledge, and then speaking it to others will not impart life and newness to others. It's got to come from your spirit, not what you're picking up by your five senses. Not happening. Or, God forbid, you watch, you watch Fox News or CNN or MSNBC or some news outlet or some social media outlet, and then you regurgitate what they're saying. Oh my God, now you're in the poison. You're not even in the religion anymore. You're in this, you're in this. Although religion dark too. I don't know if you can separate the two anymore now. So we live from our spirit. And when we live from our spirit, we have some, we'll have something new that we're encountering and that we can share to others. And in John 3, 6, Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and what? The Spirit, he cannot <clears throat> enter, let alone see. Uh, he, I think Jesus, Paul says, flesh and blood will, cannot encounter the kingdom. The kingdom of God cannot be encountered through flesh and blood. Jesus says here that you cannot even enter the kingdom of God without the Spirit, being born of the Spirit. That would, now watch what he says in verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. There is a line of demarcation, what is spirit and what is flesh. And that's what the rhema word of God, the sword of the spirit, the double two-edged sword of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, that's what the rhema word, the speaking word of God does, is it separates what is five senses and what is spiritual. Like Paul tried to separate their actions. You guys are going this. You're carnal. If you had been drinking the so eating the solid food, you would be spiritual. I came to you to talk to you as spiritual men. So when Paul's speaking the word, the reign of word of God, it's dividing whether you're carnal in this area or whether you're spiritual in this area. If you're carnal in this area, you're going to be regurgitating the same old, same old. But if you are out of, living out of the spirit, then you're going to experience new. All right? Um, real service to God is keeping ourselves in the presence of the Lord and living out of spirit. And that's the only way we can talk, contact Him is by living out of the spirit. Now, that's for, those, for those who don't agree with that, let me give you some scripture. They're not here. No, we're not going to look them up. I'm just randomly coming off my head. Here's um, uh, uh, John chapter 4, don't quote me, maybe verse 24, where he says... They who worship me must worship me, how? In spirit and in truth. So if I am to worship him in spirit, that's the only worship he takes that comes out of my spirit. Spirit to spirit, God is spirit. First John, wherever that's at in First John, but God is spirit. And so I worship him out of my spirit. There's, we're joined to one, so my spirit and spirit joined to one as one, and that's the communion and worship. Then I can take you to um, Ephesians 6.18. You may want to write that down. And Paul says, praying always in the spirit. Praying always in the spirit. Well, why, why use that terminology if everything I do is automatically by osmosis in the spirit? Because it ain't. Because we go to the Corinthian church, and he says the, the natural man can't ascertain the things of the spirit. The only way a spirit, 
he says we're taking spiritual words and speaking spiritual words to spiritual men from spirit to spirit and and the, and the five senses are not involved I mean they are involved but they're but but what we do doesn't originate from the five senses it's coming out of spirit all right so our service to God is in the intimate contact with God and I call that organic that's it you can't make this thing up you can't get mechanical about it this is organic this is out of union this is out of spirit you can't Jesus says the spirit blows you don't even see where like the wind you don't even see where the wind goes where it comes but you see the effect of it that's organic you can't manufacture the things of the spirit with the carnality of man you can't I mean think about churches that are actually they to today they have a they have a program how they're going to do the service they program the service you're gonna you're gonna that's like programming the wind can you program the wind we can't even predict the weather but boy we can predict our services why because we program the wind out of it you can't program the spirit it's you just gotta you gotta let the spirit do what he wants to do when he wants to do it how he wants to do it and when he does it you have new you have new you don't have the same old same old now Am I preaching to the choir? Am I, I, I think we need this message here. Because we can we have and become predictable. We need to be fresh. We need to be here. We need to wait for the wind to blow and move where the where the spirit is moving. Or we're not going to have new. We're going to keep doing the same old, same old, and go around the mountain again, put another Sunday in under our belt, and leave here with with what? A couple of weeks of new information. Maybe I shared something you didn't know. I'm not into that. I'm not into sharing something you don't know so I can get an ooh and an ah. I want to share something that brings newness to you, newness to this atmosphere in this church, and does something significant for the kingdom of God. Let me tell you what dominion is. Dominion actually is this, bringing new on the scene. Dominion is not saying, okay, get rid of that. I buy that. I lose that. No. Dominion is when I show up, I'm bringing, I'm bringing God to the situation, and God is new. God's always new. He can't, he's not old. The minute he becomes old, you have figured him out, and that ain't never going to happen. I, I even believe this. When we get to heaven, we still won't know him completely. It will be a lifetime of eternity. And he'll be, every time you move, you go, oh, wow, like a diamond. You know, they, every time you see another facet of that diamond, it's just beautiful. You're just going to, you're going to always be in the realm of beauty, and it's always going to be more beautiful every time you see it, because you can never ever find and pass by his ways or himself figuring out. It's not going to happen. So the dominion is, when I show up, if I'm living out of spirit, I will be experiencing new, and I'll bring new to the table. I'll bring new to the situation. I'll bring new to the circumstance. It's living out of the Spirit. Well, I just am not bringing out new because we have never been taught how to live out of the Spirit. We, the, world keeps li the world keeps us living out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The world keeps living, having us live out of our five senses, out of our common sense, out of our sensory perception, how we perceive things. Not out of the Spirit. So it's not a formula. All right, I'm almost done. Listen to this. Everything that is related to our spirit is new. For the Lord, the life of God, and the whole, this is on your outline. For the Lord and the life of God and the Holy Spirit are in our spirit. We want to contact Him by exercising our spirit so that we may enjoy and receive Christ as the new one. Newness itself and always being new. Both newness of life and newness of spirit are related to the spirit. The newness of life, and I'm closing, the newness of life is related to Christ himself in his resurrection, who is the life-giving spirit. The spirit in the Lord, as the Lord dwells. We may serve in newness of spirit because God has given us a spirit. And the result of it is newness of life ongoing newness everything that is related to our spirit is new and everything that comes out of our spirit is new our spirit is a source of newness because the lord the life of god and the holy spirit are there and we need to live from our 
oneness, if you will, that's in our spirit, and we need to do it continually, manifesting and demonstrating new on earth as it is in heaven. Dominion is bringing new on the scene in every situation and circumstance. And I want to leave you with Revelation 21.5, again, where he says he's on the throne and he says, Behold, I make all things new. Andy, if you want to come. So this morning, as we take communion, and now I want you to see God is new. He can't be old. Okay? You don't believe that? Why did they have why couldn't they eat the same manna two days in a row? Mm -hmm. So the manna has to be new. And who's the manna? Jesus, I am the what? Bread that comes down. Your fathers ate the manna. I am the bread of life. So that wormy manna got old because it no longer reflected God. Listen to this. That manna is a type of Jesus, but tomorrow it will not be because yesterday's revelation is not sufficient for today's situations and circumstances. He, he, he became old. And so God's like, I'm always new. That's why you can't eat the same man. I'm always new. God is new. I mean, that's just, that's, that, to me, that nails it. Think of God as new. So when we're eating or partaking this morning, we're partaking of new. The manna is new. The manna is God is new. I live out of newness of spirit, which produces newness of life, because God is new and He's never old, and the Spirit is always as the cloud moving me into new. I make all things new. Let's partake of Jesus, the living manna, the bread that came out of heaven that's new. And every day, every day is new. He's not judging you over your past sins because today's new. You sin today, tomorrow's new. His mercies are what? New every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness because of His shed blood and what He sacrificed and redeemed us with keeps us new. Sin can't make you old. His mercy makes you new.